What's going on, everybody? Right Hand Drive Ron with you here today. If you notice to my left, you're right. We've got my man, Mr. Reed, and my daughter, BK. What better way to spend Father's Day than with us in the garage? That's right, y'all. Ron is getting a little help today in the garage. So you might remember this guy right here. This is Mr. Blister. Come on! Because he shows up after the work's done, if you've seen my auto door lock install video. Anyway, the purpose of today's video is to replace the spark plugs, gap those spark plugs appropriately, and replace the ignition uh, plug wires for the little truck. I've noticed it's been stuttering, so we're going to go after that today. Another thing is, if you notice, the KEIs seem to be multiplying. The neighbors actually think we're raising rabbits at the rate they're multiplying. Anyway, stick around with us. Let's get to work. All right, everyone. It's time for my favorite segment called... What's in the box? All right, so like always, this is what's in the box. So I was able to get some NGK plug wires here from Yahoo Auctions care of Mini Me Me at All Things JDM with a Z. Shout out, thank you. The plugs were actually available at O'Reilly's, and here is your number. The BKR6 Echo 11s here is what we're after. Just three of those puppies. I think we're about mm, $12 total for those, so... We'll get those gapped appropriately, one stall our wires, and go from there. All right, so I've taken a look at the Honda repair book here for the little truck and the plug gap in there. Obviously, it's in Japanese, the metric system. Don't know why we don't do that in the States. Nonetheless, 1 to 1.1 millimeter, which equates to about 39 to 43 thousandths of an inch. Um, so we're just going to make sure our plugs are gapped that way. And just to show you guys how to do that, in case you've never done it before, Got your sweet uh, champion plug gap thing here, which has got everything in thousands of an inch, starting at 20 thou there, 30 thou, 40. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that this gap here is between 39 thousandths and 43 thousandths. So to do that, we just want to start there at the low end of 20. And you basically just slide your um, gap gauge around until it catches. And then where it catches is where you take a look at where your gap's at. So right now we're on the high end of that spectrum. We're at 43 thou. Um, so this plug right here is actually good to go. Now if you're running a turbo Honda engine, you might want to set that down there around 30 just so that that big boost don't blow the spark out. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But for these guys, we're not boosting these Acties yet. That's how we set it. So two of the three were about 43 thousandths, which is fine. This one here is actually coming up a little bit short um, in regards to the gap there. We're sitting at about 35, 36 thou there. So you just want to kind of work it up and you can kind of use your gauge here to kind of pry that open until you're getting the appropriate uh, gap that you want there. So I'm just giving it a little gentle twist right there until I can get it up to about 43 thousandths there like the rest of them. Just double checking that. Let it slide back around to 43-ish, 42 thousandths there. We're good to go in the truck now. Remember, you should only take out spark plugs when the engine is cold because you can strip out a thread in the head. All right, so I've pulled off the first uh, spark plug wire here, and this happens to be number one there. Pulling off a little rubber in there. If you look, it's actually cracked right there. So that could be part of the issue why the truck's got a little bit of a hesitation. You could get some uh, potential arcing in there that goes against the cylinder head instead of staying here in the, uh, I guess the semiconductor here. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these off. Uh, I'm gonna take these off and try to retain the actual uh, plug wire holders. That way we can put the new set on and um, all the plug wires will be routed in a similar fashion. All right, so I've got all three of the plug wires out. I wasn't able to keep all the wires together, but what I did do is I left um, this actual wire keeper right here on um, wire number two here. So when I get the new set, I'll put that back in a similar place. Um, you got your other wire holder right there. And then here's where your three wires go onto your distributor, right there. So just pulling those straight up, no bolts, no clamps, just uh, straight up. Get them out of the cylinder head. I'm gonna go ahead and check these uh the tubes here as well and see if those are cracked like uh, cylinder number one was all right so i've got one spark plug bk is going to get one mr reed's going to get that last one for us let's see what these things look like i have popped them loose 
and giving them the spinning opportunity. Let's zoom in on that thing. Oh, all right. Oh, focus. Not terrible, but old. A little crispy, a little crusty. That's all right. We got new ones to go back in there. So let's get the rest of the last one out here. All right, Mr. Reed has chosen his. Looks like he's got cylinder number one. It's a little closer for a man of his stature to lean over the little truck. He's twisting. Oh, he's got the MJ tongue out. That means he's doing work over there. All right, buddy. Pull that thing out and see if you got a fish yet. Oh, we got one. What's it look like? Pull it off that stick. All right. We got the little BK on it. My man's gonna lose my tool of my engine. Eh, there's that one. There again, won't focus. We got new ones to go in anyway. All right, as the kids mentioned earlier, it's always good to start whenever the engine's cold. Never try to remove threads out of a cylinder head whenever it's warm. The whole metal expands, thermal expansion, things get tight, threads strip out the deal. So when we're going back in, I like to use a little uh, assembly lubricant here on the actual threads of the spark plug wires now. They've actually got some thread conditioner lubricant there you can buy at the parts store. I happen to have some of this laying around, so what I'll do is I'll just put this in here on the threads just because that cylinder head being aluminum, the, these plugs being steel, um, it's always a good idea to make sure your steel doesn't beat your aluminum. Um, this will help with going in. This will help whenever one day we change these things out when the Acti's got a million miles. So I'm just going to get all these three lube up here and then we will start putting them back in all right so a little trick of the trade i like to do so most of your standard socket sets come with a spark plug um, socket it's basically got a piece of rubber in there that holds the top portion of your spark plug um, pro tip don't press your spark plug jam tight in there reason being whenever you get that tight in there and you go to pull out your your extension this is what happens to me at least about 99 percent of the time so what I'll do is I'll just put the uh, spark plug in the socket just until I get good engagement there of the actual um, hexagonal portion there. And then we'll just be real gentle going back into the cylinder head there, getting those started. And I'm gonna afford the kids an opportunity here to do the same thing. Um, also, as you go back in here, if you remember earlier, we gapped the spark plugs appropriately. For most of them, we're just checking to make sure the gap is appropriate. The more you bang around, the more your gap's gonna change, right? So as you're going back in, make sure you're staying just on the sides and you're not hitting the end of your um, electrode there on your spark plug. All right, so the kids have got all the uh, spark plugs in, hand tight. I wish I had a torque value, I don't. You guys know I like my torque numbers. Um, but keep in mind that new spark plugs, they have a crush washer on them. So as you go to tighten, you're gonna feel it get really solid. And once it gets really solid, you can almost feel just a slight crush and then it gets tight again so when it gets that tight again stop okay uh, we're not trying to rip the threads out of the head here um i've been doing this for a while so it's almost like a mechanics feel type deal but you can feel the crush you get a little resistance and then it gets tight and there it is same for all three easy it gets a little stiff right there you're crushing that uh crush washer on the plug and then it tightens up again. And you know at that point you've crushed it and uh, you're nice and tight. So before we put in our our new spark plug wires, we need to take our, our old ignition coil wires and replace it with a new one, which is this one right here. Yep. Tell her. That is correct. Yep. All right, so we're moving this old ignition coil wire um, there's a couple of other wires that are attached to it with a little clip, but much like the spark plug wires, you're just going to pull up off the distributor cap itself. There's one end of the wire right there. Um, this is easier to do under the truck, but I'm trying to just show you guys how to do it from up top. Show you what this looks like once it comes out. And then you're just going to pull the other end off the ignition coil itself. And it comes off just like the spark plug wires as well. Fish it out of there slowly. And here's the old little unit here. These are the other two clips right here that was holding some of your um, wires that also go to your distributor. So what I'll do is with the new ones, I'll swap over and put these in a similar location. That way when we put everything back together, um, these clips will be in the same place to hold that wire. All 
All right, so I've got the new ignition coil wire. I've got the little um, wire clamps there, ties, clips, whatever you want to call them, ready to go back on. Obviously this end here goes to the ignition coil, which is towards that direction. This right here goes to the distributor cap. So I'm gonna fish this little guy in here and uh, get this hooked up. All right, so we've got the ignition coil wire in there. You can see we've got the clip back on that's holding the other wires that go to and from the distributor ignition coil up in there. So next up, we will see if the kids can put on some spark plug wires from the distributor over here to the cylinder head. Alrighty guys, so I have spark plug number one and I'm going to put it in on the cylinder position number one, which this part would go in right here. And then I'm gonna feed it through over here to on top of the distributor cap where it says number one, this side will go in. Okay guys, as you see, I have spark plug number two, which goes into cylinder number two right here. And the other end goes into distributor number two, right there. All right, so we've got all the wires back on the Acti and they are clearly the cleanest thing in the engine bay, but just trying to keep our spacing and our routing good. Be careful whenever you get um, underneath here in this location. Make sure you're not rubbing anything on the underside of the bed just so you don't rub a hole in your wires or anything. Um, but other than that, yeah, pretty clean and simple job. Just figured I'd take the time to show everybody since this is a very common thing that I probably should have done whenever I got the little truck. Um, all the other fun stuff happens before the routine maintenance, unfortunately. So anyway, let's get this thing put back together. All right, BK, moment of truth. Start her up. Oh! Give a, give a little pedal there. Other pedal on the right. All right, everybody, it seems that we've got the little Acti truck running well. The plug wires and the plugs themselves did the job. Thanks to my team here, BK, Mr. Reed there. He hung around this time, so we'll remove the blister label from him. Thank you, that's more like it. All right, so as you can see, we got a van. We got a two wheel drive truck. We got a box truck. So good things coming. Um, as always, if you like what Ron's doing, please subscribe. Uh, check out other videos on my channel for maintenance items and other general shenanigans with Ron. Till next time, take care folks. Bye.